So now I have my uh, building completed here, and I've actually gone through and changed a little bit of the alpha kind of tiling settings on each individual part. And then I've also gone through and renamed these tools here to just make them a little more kind of appropriate. So I've taken the solid part and just labeled that glass, and then taken the wires and labeled them wires, and then taken the actual pillars and labeled them pillars. To rename an object inside the actual subtool palette here, you just need to click on that object, then come down here and just click on rename, and then type in the new name you want. So by renaming these guys, it's going to make it a little bit easier on organization when I actually get into Keyshot. So if I turn solo off here, and here's my building back again, I just render this quick with BPR. You can see this is the final result of the model here in ZBrush here. So I've got a lot of these nice little wires up here on the roof areas and then a lot of stringy type stuff going on in the building here. So a lot of interesting eye detail just generated through those actual surface noise alphas. And once again, this was only generated with literally three pieces of geometry that were all the same and then two of them actually just have surface noise applied on them. So now that I have this model finished, I'm going to send it to Keyshot now to generate some renders. And to do this, I'm going to use the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. So I have the bridge installed, and to activate this, I need to come up here to the actual render palette up here. And I'm going to open up the external renderer, and I'm going to turn on Keyshot. Now, when this option is active here, if you come over here and click BPR now, it's going to send what is ever visible on your canvas here to Keyshot rather than rendering it in BPR inside of ZBrush. So if I just minimize ZBrush here, I have Keyshot 5 already open over here, and I'm just now going to send this model from ZBrush here over to Keyshot. So made sure I had that render setting set to Keyshot for the external renderer, and now I'm just going to click BPR. Now after this is processed, you'll see your model should now be inside of Keyshot here, and it should look identical to what you have inside of ZBrush when you rendered with BPR. So I'm just going to reposition this model here, just rotate it around, and then just zoom in by holding Alt and then clicking, and then holding the middle mouse button here to kind of just reposition the model in the scene like so. Now Keyshot will keep rendering your scene the longer you let it sit, so if you manipulate the camera some, you'll see that it's going to reset that render, and then as soon as you release, it's going to just continuously render, and the image is going to get clearer and clearer. So this looks like a pretty decent angle here. So now I need to change my environment. This is actually just a standard environment here inside of Keyshot. So I'm going to come over here to the Environment tab, and there is a ZBrush uh, folder here that would be installed if you installed the content from the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. And I'm just going to choose one of these environments out of here. So I'm going to choose this Pixelogic Malt St. Michael, and then I'm going to load that one in by just clicking and dragging it over. And now I have that HDR image loaded in the background of my scene here. So now with this loaded, I can hold control and click in the background of the actual viewport here, and I can rotate the scene around my model. Now right now the scene is looking a little bit dark, so I'm going to adjust some of these settings too. So I'm going to hit spacebar, and this will bring up the actual scene panel over here. And then I'm going to go to the environment tab, and I'm going to increase the contrast and the brightness. So I'm going to increase the contrast to say something like 1.2, and the brightness to say something like 1.5. Now I'm going to hit spacebar again just to close the environment panel here. My model now should be affected by the environment a little bit more. So if I hold control and rotate now, I should be getting a little more highlights here. Now right now I also just have the default matte cap material from ZBrush over here applied to my model. So I'm just going to come over here to the library tab and then select materials. And now I'm just going to start applying some different materials to the model. So the first material I'm going to apply is some glass. I'm just going to come over here and just select a glass. Uh, we'll start off with some like dense black right here. And I'm just going to click this and drag it on my model. Now you're going to want to drag it to the area where the glass is applied, so that actual subtool, the first subtool we had, and just drag it over on the model, and you'll see it update on the model like so. Now I can hold control and rotate the model some, and you can see that that glass is now getting the reflection from the environment in it, which is starting to make it look more building-esque. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some different materials to those actual wires and then also to the pillars. So I'm going to come up here to uh, this panel up here, and then I've been using a lot of the Snowstorm and the Silverleaf. So with the Snowstorm selected, I'm going to come over here and just drag this onto the actual wires like so and then just release, and then I'm going to grab the silver leaf and drag that on to the actual pillars. 
So now I'm getting this kind of effect on my building. Now I can rotate around and getting this nice kind of glowing type reflection from everything and it's looking a lot more metal and glass which is looking pretty nice. So now the environment really isn't matching uh, this building right now so I could take the time to kind of position it and make it look like it's actually in the scene but I just want to fill this in with kind of like a flat blue color. So I'm going to hit spacebar again and now underneath the project panel here I'm going to make sure I'm in the environment tab and I'm going to change the background setting here to color and then I'm going to click this color thing here and I'm just going to apply a blue color. So this is just RGB 136, green is 136, and blue is 255. And then I'm just going to hit OK. So the HDR environment is now hidden and now I just have this kind of blue color in the background of my scene. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to change the height as well. So right now I have the horizon hitting kind of like this part of the building. So I want to give the illusion that it's actually a little bit taller of a building. So I'm going to move the horizon down a little bit, so something like that. And then I'm just going to reposition it in the scene like this really quick. Get some sort of effect like that. And then I'm going to go to the actual camera tab up here. And I'm going to turn on depth of field really quick. And I'm going to set the focus point to be like this part of the building. And just hit done. And then I'm going to change the f-stop so that increases the kind of blur depth there. And then I'm going to turn on this infect slider. And I'm going to put a little bit of vignetting on the scene. And maybe increase the bloom radius just a tad bit. And maybe the bloom intensity. Then I'm going to hit spacebar to close the project tab. And now I'm going to reposition my building like so in the scene. And that lobby is okay, but for this render, let's go ahead and just remove it from view. And then position it something like that. And then we're just going to let it sit here and render for a second. So this is looking pretty good. I'm getting a nice kind of environment reflection. And all these little areas are now filling in with all these kind of crazy details. I'm going to rotate a little bit more to the side. Now the glass right now may be a little bit too dark, so I may want to apply another glass too there. So I'm going to come over here to the library panel and make sure I'm in the materials tab. And I'm going to select the, the glass dense white. I'm just going to click on that and then drag that over to the actual windows. Now with this glass applied, you're going to be able to start seeing some of these kind of underlying pieces of geometry that I generated in ZBrush here with that surface noise kind of coming through on these buildings. So you kind of see these areas through here. So just giving the whole image some more depth as it's rendering out. So after you let it sit here, you'll start seeing these areas kind of clear up. I'm getting really nice kind of window results in all these areas here. So here is a final example of a rendered image using this process. So this model was created entirely inside of ZBrush, then just sent to Keyshot to generate the final render. So you can see that using these alphas across your models to generate this kind of complex depth is really fast and it generates really nice results. And this process works really well not only for buildings, but also for vehicles, cars, anything you think of that has a lot of kind of detailed elements on it that you could just generate a simple alpha texture with and then apply it to your model to increase that kind of uh, visual quality of your work. So that's the end of this tutorial. Stay tuned for more videos on Z Classroom.